Good evening. Good evening. Again, it is good to see each of you here on this rainy day. It is nice to be able to come together in this place and worship again, having the afternoon we were blessed with and the opportunity to worship. We have been studying the theme, God by Name, here on Sunday evenings and looking at different names for God found throughout the Hebrew Bible. And the Old Testament therein where we can draw closer to him is the hope and the desire by learning more about God through the ways in which God has characterized himself through inspiration. Ways in which God has deemed himself by name to describe himself in his holy word. And as we've seen, there are a number of names by which God goes by in the Old Testament in particular. We talked about that which is the very first in Genesis 1 and 1, Elohim. That which represents the Godhead. And we've talked about several that have looked at whether it be God Almighty or His Majesty or whatever the case may be. And tonight, we will be looking at the Hebrew name for God, Adonai. There's a song that's now become more popular and, and people sing. I think we even sang it one time uh, in the Wednesday night singing uh, that talks about the Hebrew name Adonai. And when we look at this and we think about the term Adonai, it comes from or is first seen, if you will, in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 2. But Abram said, O Lord God. The word Lord there, or the combination of O Lord there, is the term Adonai. And the word God in particular there in Genesis 15 and verse 2 is what we know as the word Yahweh. Now what's interesting about the term Adonai is it's found uh, several times in the Old Testament. In fact, well over 400 times uh, in the Old Testament, this term is used. And when combined with Yahweh, Lord God, we see it actually found 292 other times in the Bible. And so the Old Testament there in describing God uses this terminology a lot. In fact, Adonai specifically being talked about and discussed with God himself, as it does have some other meanings or can be applied to humans as well. But when specifically talking about God, we find it 395 times in the Old Testament. That tells us that this is an important name for God. It's one that he uses quite often and is used of him quite often in his inspired word. In fact, there's an easy way to kind of tell the differentiation uh, between Jehovah as it's typically seen, not in a combo like we see here, but Jehovah as it's typically, Yahweh, excuse me, as it's typically seen, in Adonai. If you look back to verse 1 there in Genesis 15, and then verse 2, we see this. After these things, the word of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, that indicates in your Bible that that's Yahweh, which we'll discuss at a different time, the most prominent name for God. And then when you see the lowercase O-R-D with Lord, that is the Adonai that we're talking about tonight. So why is it important to know our Creator as Adonai? What is significant about this name that we need to understand and recognize, especially considering how many times it's found in the Bible? First off, what does Adonai mean? That's the beginning point, isn't it? You and I, we don't, uh, we're not Hebrew scholars or Greek scholars, and so it's important to see what is that word specifically. Why did they translate Adonai, Lord, lowercase o-r-d? Well, let's look at defining the word. Let's examine what this word means. The root word of Adonai is just simply uh, Adon, A-D-O-N. And it is the most common word found in the Old Testament to describe the idea of authority over others. In fact, it's found over 800 times 
in the Old Testament, the root word for Adonai, Adon. And so over 800 times this word is seen, and every time it holds with it the idea of authority. That's why it's typically translated Lord or Master. When used with humans, we see it used with that idea in mind in several different situations. For example, we see it used with master over slave in Genesis 39, 2 and 3, where Joseph is therefore the slave of the master Egyptian. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. There we see both of them used. Adonai there at the beginning, master when talking about uh, Potiphar. We see this word when connected with hum humans as uh, in connection with husbands over their wives. In Genesis 18 and verse 12, so Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I am worn out, my Lord, that's Abraham, is old, shall I have pleasure? We see this word Adonai in connection with, uh, Adon in connection with uh, just the ownership of property even. In 1 Kings 16, 24, and he bought him a hill of, Sam of Samaria from Shemir of for two talents of silver. And he fortified the hill and called the name of the city that he built Samaria after the name of Shemor, the owner, there's our word again, owner of the hill. We even see it in connection to, as a title, and that's probably how with humans it's most often seen and most often translated, with title for anyone who has authority or is in a position over another. Lot would even call the angels who came to get him Lord, if we remember. And Lot said to them, Oh no, my lords. There's our word Adonai here. When in connection with humans, we see it used in various ways for various people, but it always has the idea of authority of master, of a recognition of ownership, if you will. When pertaining to God, however, the word Adonai takes on a slightly different term because it's typically placed with a, even though a plural term like Elohim, with a singular verb. In other words, when we see the capital L and lowercase o-r-d for Adonai, it's talking about, again, the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. In this, all three are being discussed or seen as one in ownership. They are owners. They are the ones with authority. They are, like in Elohim, the Father, Son, and Spirit, one in recognition of such. Understanding... The, our God's name as Adonai. It helps us understand our relationship with God. Because when we look at this and when we see this, we examine this, what we see and understand is, listen, we got to, it's got significance. If it's found almost 400 or over a little over 400 times in connection with God in its totality, it's significant, but why is the name significant? Why this name in particular? We see others where maybe there's a handful. There are some that over 2,000, as we talked about the other day, Elohim and others. What is significant about this? When we look at this word Adonai, it's talking about God's complete ownership. It's revealing who owns everything in reality. When we think about it, of course, Adonai, or Lord God, owns everything, doesn't he? Not just some things or most things, but absolutely everything. And the Bible is clear about this. In Psalm 24, and verse 1, we read this, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell in it. Listen, the earth is his and everything in it. The people also and all that dwell in it are his. 
Deuteronomy 10, 14, Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Haggai in Haggai chapter 2 in verse 8 said this, The silver is mine of God and God, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. Adonai describes ownership. As the psalmist in Psalm 50, 10 said, For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. Over and over in Scripture, God, Adonai, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they are the owners of everything. This means, and it lets us know, that God is our owner, isn't he? He is our owner. We don't like to always think of it in these terms. We don't like in, in our modern way, and especially the PC way of living, we have today in our society this idea of ownership and being owned by someone, it, it bristles people's uh, skin, their hair on the back of their neck. There was uh, some NBA players, I think I've mentioned before, not too long ago, said, listen, we don't want to call those who own the team, the owners anymore. Even though those same guys had on their uh, list of the owners, they were owners of certain buildings uh, and certain uh, uh, things they had invested in and become uh, owners of. That term owner is one that we don't always like, as I said. However, it is the reality. God is our owner. If he owns everything, he owns us. When we obey the gospel... We stop being slaves to sin, of course, and Satan becomes slaves of God. In 1 Corinthians 7, 22, we read this, For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freedman. Likewise, when he is called while free, he is Christ's slave. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 16, says it this way, Live as free people. Do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slave. Again, Paul. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves of God. Paul even talking to masters or owners of other slaves in Colossians 4 1 said this Masters, treat your bondservants or slaves justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master, an owner in heaven. Listen, we are owned by God. Why in the world would we trade being owned by Satan for being owned by God? What is it about being God's slave that is better than being Satan's? When we understand and we think about the reality of what Adonai is trying to say and what Adonai is trying to teach, we have to ask that question, why would we want God as our master, our owner over Satan. There are three reasons when we look at our lives and what Scripture teaches us and what has done for us. I think we, there are three reasons we can determine specifically for this. Why would we want God as our master, as our owner? Because God delivered salvation for everyone. I know some try to teach and some try to say to comfort their own uh, mentality that, listen, God allows some and, and doesn't allow some. And listen, it's not up to us, but no, God, he wants everyone to be saved. And he has delivered salvation for everyone. In Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That gift God has given, given us. That grace, Titus 2 and 11, has appeared bringing salvation for all people. God has delivered salvation. Why would we choose God over Satan? Why would we choose righteousness over sin? Listen, there's pleasure in, in unrighteousness. It might be fleeting and you might have to keep going after it, but there is that which keeps people going back to it. Why would anyone choose God as their master first and foremost he has brought salvation. Satan has brought damnation. God brought salvation. Why would God want, why would we want, excuse me, God as our owner? 
not only because he has brought salvation, but because he teaches us how to access that salvation. Some people have it in their mind that God simply sets things in motion and leaves, or they got it in their mind that God uh, is just up there teasing us his humanity, and, and, and we can't really know who God is. We can't really follow him as we should and things of this nature, but that's not who Adonai is. That's not who our owner is. We have obeyed the gospel. Why would we choose God as our master? Because he teaches us how to access salvation. Not only did he bring it, he teaches us how to take hold of it. In Isaiah chapter 48 and 17, it's beautifully declared, this is what the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says, I am Yahweh, your God, who teaches you for your benefit, who leads you in the way you should go. We talked about Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, that grace appearing to everyone. In verse 12 through 13, it says, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why would anyone choose God as their master, their owner, over Satan? Because first, he brought salvation, and second, he teaches us how to access it how we can have a relationship with him again and live with him for eternity. Why else should we choose and make God our master, our owner? Why should we choose, as the song says, pierce my ear, make myself a slave forevermore under him? Because in our weakness, in our humanity, in our faults, God, Adonai, still provides mercy and comfort for us and to us. Paul would beautifully say in 2 Corinthians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. The difference between Satan and God the difference between having Satan as our master and God as our master is the difference between light and darkness. The difference between love and lies. You and I know we're going to serve a master. We're not free of our own accord. Luke 16, 13, Romans 6, 16 tells us very clearly we're either slaves of sin or slaves of righteousness. We're either God is our master or Satan is our master. We don't have a choice in freedom of our own selves. We're going to serve one or the other. However, Adonai, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, who owns all creation, including us, purchased us with God the Son's blood, Acts 20 and 28. That you and I may become sons and daughters of God, Romans 8, 14. And slaves to God's righteousness instead of sin and death, Romans 6, verse 18. In Genesis 15 and verse 2, we first see Adonai as it is applied to our Creator. And 394 times after that, God says, understand what I mean by I have the authority and I am an owner, but not an owner of evil and lies, not a master of torment and pain but one of love, for God is love. You and I tonight chose love as our master, and I'm thankful for that. When we look at God, Adonai, Lord, when we see who he is, he is demonstrating to us what he wants to be for us. He wants to be all those blessings that we can have. 
He's a just God, a righteous God. But he wants you and I with him forever. And he wants us humble enough to know that we have him there to rely on. As you go throughout the rest of this evening, the rest of uh, whatever life God grants us here on earth from this point on, never forget your Lord, your Adonai. When you gave that great confession and when you obeyed the gospel, when you sacrificed yourself and your life of sin to be that which is slaves of God in righteousness. You gave your life to that which is greater, he that is greater than any other. Yes, he owns us. But that word isn't a bad thing. It's not negative in any way. He has taken possession of that which he loves that which he wants to care for and show mercies toward. Your and I, Adonai tonight, loves you and I and wants us to be with him forever. So as you meditate on his word and long to draw closer to him, remember those things. Tonight, as you think about that, maybe there's someone uh, who here who's been struggling with being a slave to God. Maybe God hasn't been your master, your owner, like he should. As we saw and as we recognized, we only, uh, we're always going to have an owner. It's either going to be the unrighteousness or righteousness. It's up to us who we choose. And we are allowed to choose, thankfully. If you're struggling with that tonight, go to your God and my God in prayer. Go to your owner who loves you instead of lies to you. Repent of those things you've been struggling with and reconnect with him. And if we can help you tonight in that endeavor through encouragement and strength or study, whatever way we can, if we can bear that burden with you and help you draw closer to your Adonai, your God, your Lord, let us help you with that tonight. If you're struggling with that, come forward now as we stand and as we sing.